You are now live streaming to Twitch Linus Tech. Linus Tech. Click here to open a browser to view the stream. Remember to mute the stream. I love they have they put that warning That's, in just for me, didn't that they? That remember is pretty solid. Yeah, I like it. This is is this new? This is new, isn't it? Um that is a thing that I believe I put on last week when you weren't here last week. Where was I last? Oh yeah. You were um you were you were in person VR game watching. Weren't yes. You? Yes. That's yeah. what you were doing. Yeah. Which actually ended up not being what I thought it was, because you don't watch from the crowd. No. So it, it was the same. Right. Anyways, we have lots of awesome topics this week. No, we don't. Um, we have, like, <laughs> jack all. This is probably going to be the best show we've ever had. Uh, in SpaceX news, uh, Elon Musk wins a $112 million NASA contract. Is this just all, like, is that all there is? SpaceX, the <laughs> Mars Lander... Tesla, so it's all space and Elon Musk. Uh, welcome to the the Luke Show. Uh, really, Valve Game Awards? Th things this Luke is a fan of. This qualifies as news this week. <laughs> uh, Samsung adding new obtrusive ads to your old smart TV, and more reasons to not buy a smart TV. And you can't buy not a buy new, a smart TV. New dumb TV is it not possible? No, I've been looking into it. Every TV is a smart TV. Can you dumb out your smart? You TV? can unplug it from the internet, but then you can't Netflix and chill. But you could Chromecast that. You could Chromecast that, so you would have to pay for additional hardware. Black Friday deals. I think it's like twenty nine bucks on B and H. For a new, Chromecast. New, new Chromecast. Yeah. New Chromecast. It's actually a pretty solid. Price. Okay. Well. I'm not even going to try not and pick sponsored. four standout deals, or standout deals. Xbox standout. One streaming comes to Oculus Rift on December 12th. Who cares? Uh, not me. Uh, uh, oh, wow. <laughs> All right, intro! <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be our worst show ever. Which is like a pretty high bar. Oh, there's that. We can just talk about what we did this week. That meant I don't even know if this is going to be a I mean, maybe it's. I was having a huge problem. Maybe they just don't care. Yeah, I know they're here. Oh, People are oh, watching. oh, hold on, hold on. I gotta do the thing. Hey! Oh, the, the couch move thing is bad. Why? This Why? isn't even that complicated. Is it Colton's fault this time? I don't nope. think so. It's not Colton's fault. Well, we'll blame Colton. Just edit just the just same move file. Again? Just move again? Well, that one didn't no, move. No, I fix it and Chef Steps are the same. Terrible. Terrible. Land show, two out of ten. Two out of ten. Half an hour late with no explanation whatsoever. Yeah. And they can't why. even get the intro graphics in the right spot. At and least the laptop's pink. Look, if this was pre-recorded, Augman plays. Why wouldn't it be on time? Why wouldn't it be? <laughs> Why is the camera not set up properly? Look at this. I think we... Uh, well, no, you, you usually slouch. I think that's on purpose. I think that's by design. But, like, to be proper... I would have to slouch this. I don't know if I slouch that much. But if it... Well, no, you sit back. See? Well, you don't sit back that much. Okay, you know what? I... I I think it tilted down. Anyway, the point is, if it was pre-recorded, wouldn't we have cut out the mistakes? <laughs> no. <laughs> we probably wouldn't. <laughs> okay, but in my defense, it's usually me editing this crap after the fact. Mm, yeah. I don't know how video editing works. No, you're just adding to the idea that it's pre-recorded. And it's complicated. Yeah. And it's, no, really, like, it, okay, it used to be very complicated back when XSplit didn't have an option to force constant frame rate. So that was a problem. So to the conspiracy theorists out there being like, oh, so everything is pre-recorded and then Linus edits it? Uh, no. If we edit the show, it's because, like, something screwed up, like we, we, uh... The stream got disconnected or, like, a capture card stopped working or whatever the case may be. Or there was, like, personal information leaked so, or, like, something that was an actual problem. So the problem is that a lot of the time, um, I don't know how much you guys know about video recording, but if you don't gracefully terminate a video recording, there we go. it can be, like, pretty screwed up. And it can actually be very, very hard. You sometimes have to run it through. Like, I've used everything from FFmpeg to Handbrake to Vegas to Premiere 
to uh, what else have I used? I've even used like weird Lots tools, like whoever media converter, whatever. Like sometimes I'll just have to run it through like multiple different transcoders. And then one of them will figure it out. One of them will figure Hopefully. it out. And then I'll be able to get it onto a timeline and stitch it together with the other stuff. Like when WAN show needs to be edited, it's usually Bad. an enormous problem. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, wow, we have like speaking of enormous problems, nothing today. We don't have anything to talk about except Black you, Friday deals and float plane. Black Friday deals. I mean, are there even whatever? Okay, so the Verge has Black Friday deals. Oh, I didn't twenty check my, best deals. The that's twenty a, best deals. That's a good way to go. Is that a book? Atlas Obscura. Yeah. Okay. There's two books there, and field notes. Field notes, space stuff. Ooh. You're a dork. I love field notes. The Vive is $100 off. Okay, if you were going to buy a Vive, then $100, I guess, is not a trivial discount in the grand scheme of the thousand-plus-dollar PC and now $700 thing. You do get a Microsoft Store gift card. I'm sure someone has bought something from the Microsoft Store at some point. <laughs> Hopefully not a game, because that seems to be going terribly. PS4 Slim, uh, 250 bucks. Okay. Uh, Xbox One controllers for 40 bucks. Okay. So That's if you're decent. if you're a PC gamer and you want to play uh, games on your PC with an Xbox One controller or a PlayStation 4 controller for that matter, I'm surprised they don't have the Steam thing on here. I've heard that you can get a Steam controller and a Steam Link together for 50 bucks, which is like pretty solid. If you want a Steam controller. And a Steam and Link. And a Steam Link. Maybe that's why it's not on here. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Oh, damn! Rough. Oh, damn! Although Civ 6 is out, so you have one game that makes sense to play with it. There's a Pixel deal where you have to pay the entire cost of the phone up front, but then the difference gets deducted from your wireless bill month to month. So it's like they subsidize you. Wait, hold on a second. You, you get... It's a re like, is this a reverse subsidy? I don't really, I, I don't really understand. <laughs> it's um, pretty weird. The Apple Watch Series One is two hundred dollars, and it's still totally not worth that. I am, I am back to using it. Okay, actually, that's something Whoa. I can talk about a little bit why? here. I'm back to using the Apple Watch. Yeah, why? Okay, so something I, I've been trying to figure out an angle for my MacBook Pro review because there's there's a couple. Are you doing like Apple ecosystem? There's some problems with me reviewing the Mac Pro. Problem number one: I am not a Mac user at all. Actually, that's the biggest problem. I am not a Mac user. I am not really an Apple number user. Number one for a reason. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah. that's number <laughs> one. And when when you're number one, you don't need number two. <laughs> um, so I'm pretty rusty. I actually did use a Mac for like six weeks back when I did my iMac videos, uh, when they released yeah, the yeah, 5K yeah. iMac. But that was a really long time ago, and quite frankly. Some of the stuff that continues to make me really mad, I had completely forgotten about. <laughs> so today, I was like literally screaming over in the corner of the warehouse yep. because there is no way, at least, okay, I actually didn't Google it again, but I did research it last time. <laughs> there is no way to force refresh Finder. So you know how in Explorer, it can kind of bug out sometimes and you'll go and add a new folder and it's just like not there or the rename doesn't take? Um, and then when you go to click on it, it's like this folder doesn't exist even though you're looking at it because it's been renamed in the background somewhere. But you, you just got to refresh it and it'll show up properly. Okay, you know how that can happen sometimes? Okay, so in Finder, if something changes within a folder and Finder doesn't realize it, you just wait. <laughs> you just wait until it finds it because it's Finder. It's working on it actively. It's working on it. Um, you don't have to worry about it. It'll yeah. For you. So there, was, there, there are some things wow. that are driving me crazy. Anyway, so the CNET's, point is, sorry, CNET's Black Friday Buyer's Guide is yeah. the worst thing. It's just you just have to like go. Yeah, check this out for. Sorry to like, I was trying to research for the next topic. You derailed me so hard there. This is the worst. Like, okay, first off, okay, there's that it. thing in the way, and then you can't like, all the information is in the right hand side. Uh, oh, what's going on? Hold on. So you got to scroll here? Or? Yeah. So there's like a little mini scroll wheel, and then there's just random picture, and then you just have to go to like next slide to find the next product. There isn't like a list of products. <laughs> and then there's no like name. So if you're just like scroll like, to the wrong part, it's like at a really weird part of the page. 
<laughs> what? Oh, sorry, I wasn't screen sharing. They missed Aww. all that. They missed all the epicness. You know what I'll tell you though? Back to my topic. Yep, there we having go. completely skipped yours, but this is terrible. Yeah. This is just is this like a blank ad spot? I think probably. Like are they just not serving it? This isn't even like a proper topic. I just wanted to show how like really, really bad this is. Yeah, yep, there you go. Oh there it is. Yeah. Okay. Um Anyway, back on the subject of, of, so okay, so why, so I've switched to the iPhone 7, I have switched to the Apple Watch, and I'm using the MacBook Pro as best I can as a daily driver um, in order to, even if I'm going to have frustrations that come along with not being an experienced Mac user, I wanna try to experience some of the best things about it. Um, stuff like continuity really is amazing. Being able to have a text message come in in my pocket and not even have to look at my wrist, just have it pop up on my computer, blippity bloppity, I'm done. I mean, I don't use text messages a lot anymore because that's like, it's 2016. But um, anyway, the point is there is stuff about it that's really, really cool. And I wanna make sure that I'm experiencing all of that, that best case scenario stuff to help offset some of the things that I'm not gonna like about it. Uh, the touchpad is amazing. Touchpad's amazing. Um, I'm trying to think what else is amazing. Um, I act, there are things that there are things that I do like about the touch bar. Yeah, already. I can see that being cool. Um, I th oh shoot, I don't think I put down. Oh yeah, okay. When you open up calculator, so even though you don't have a number pad because it's a laptop, uh, the touch bar puts all of your um, your functions. So plus okay. minus. Yeah, yeah. And, and there because it's above the number pad, they're close. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. That just saved me time. However, most of the time as I'm typing, it has word suggestions for some completely, like who types such so slowly that it would be faster to move their hands off the keyboard and press a suggested word? Oh man, and especially because spell check is built in OS wide, which is another thing I like. I don't even need it for autocorrect. Why is it there? Um, so anyway, that's Apparently, what I'm that's Twitch what I'm up plays to. Dion says that he types slow enough for that to help. And Beta Rage says he does and Zach says that his dad does. So, here's my feedback. Get L2 type. Typing. There's websites that you can go to where you like type the names of words that are on like fish and stuff. They have them in elementary school and they make it so that you type faster. They make it so it's fun to learn to type. Yeah. Um, One of them is probably called learn to type. Typing is an important life skill. Now, with that said, I do see it as a pretty cool, like, disability feature. Like, if you actually can't type. Okay, yeah. Like, let's say you, like, uh, you were in an accident and, like, you know, the last uh, joint of a couple of your fingers got lopped off or, or something so like that. So there's, like, a specific reason that is not trainable. Yes. To, like, why, yeah. Yep, so I could see that. Um, I could also see people just having That's a really hard cool. time typing on that keyboard. Oh, because it's just terrible, yeah. Um, I'm getting Hell faster, though. I, I'm getting faster on it. I'm still going to do, I'm going to actually speed test in my, like, that's going to be part of my review. Because to for be fair, me, this one's really bad, too. I like it. I'm really this fast on it. This one specifically is worse than Oh, that you're one. on the stealth. Yes. Oh, that's right. Okay. Um, anyway, oh, right. Other issues that I'm running into. So... I'm having such a hard time switching to it as a daily driver because of just how fundamentally broken certain things are. Uh, for example, browsing network shares. And yes, they're SMB shares, but it should still be okay. Holy balls. If you go to a directory you've never been to before, you can wait like 20 seconds for the <laughs> files to populate. Mm. And it, it's not even like, like, like thumbnails, like where they'll start to pop in. It's just, it, it's just empty for like a long time. And then it's like, <laughs> oh, oh, I got it. Um, also, HDMI output is broken AF on many capture cards. So I'm not going to blame my AVIO 4K because, and these guys are awesome, by the way. They already have an alpha firmware test for capturing PS4 Pro. Nice. I don't know if I told you that. No, that's I don't know cool. if I told John that. I should tell They're, John that. Aren't they Canadian? Um, that would explain why it says made in Canada and why the number that they call me from is based in Ottawa. So yeah, anyway, they're cool guys, Epifan. Um, and they're the reason that our capture streams don't fall fall off the rails anymore. Anymore, yeah. And that even I when I don't through one though. When I don't test, I know I told them that. Okay. Um, when I when every time I don't test my screen capture, it just like works. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, these guys are great. Um, they're already aware that the MacBook Pro cannot be captured, I and it's not just them. 
If I remember correctly, I'm pretty sure they use these on the ISS. Really? I remember because I was doing research into them. Um, huh. But I just I need I need pass through. Yeah, yeah, pass through would be a very very good thing because it's really janky to use an HDMI splitter yes. and, and yeah. yeah. And like I can do that, but I would just rather not. Yeah. Um, so so that's where we're at on whatever I was talking about just now. Uh, oh, I actually have a new egg Black Friday deal that's also on NCIX.com, so you can get it in the States or Canada. Uh, Intel has a crazy deal. These Black Friday deal things that we're calling out are not sponsored, just so everyone knows. Yeah, just so you know. This is just I'm planning to buy a whack of them. Um, I hate how Newegg will just glitch out because you're not in doc, you're not in the states. Well, it's a render error. Make it like grow, go, yeah. I think it's a high DPI screen issue because it works fine on some of my computers and but not others. But they should be able to fix that. Well, they should. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's and even if they can't fix it. So just to show you guys what we're talking about, um, if you uh, load a page, don't think it's going to do. Oh, there we it worked go. this time. Yeah. Holy crap! So sometimes the it what will, just happened? What? It just, oh wow, it took me to new egg, it took me back to the home page. So much fail. It'll it'll like gray out the screen to put that pop up being like, well, you're in Canada, do you mean .ca? Um, but like, then not bring up the pop up, so you just have to click somewhere and then like, it'll go away. Actually no, because new .ca is terrible. Yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah. Uh, this is on for like 300 US dollars off, which works out to like 450 Canadian off. So, or for like 400, something along those lines. So I'm actually, and it's limit two per customer, but I think I can game the system because I actually want to try and get 24 of them. Yeah. So I'm working on a plan to convert our SSD server to a pure NVMe server. We have, we have 15 people that work here. Well, it's not so much just that, as that there could be two ingest stations out there streaming high bitrate video onto it while six people are sitting in there. Oh no, I meant in order to get that many of them. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We're yeah. just gonna we're just gonna have people buy them and expense them. You can, <laughs> you, can, you can do that, right? Like it's not illegal, it's just breaking new eggs terms of service, which quite frankly, what do I care? Um, <laughs> so this is the machine I'm planning it's really funny because in a video recently I basically made fun of people for browsing the super micro website recreationally. <laughs> but it is 100% something that I do. <laughs> so I'm planning to put it in one of these that I just discovered and had not seen before at all. 24 NVMe drives. It's a 24 bay NVMe server. So you can install, I think three, a half height and two more full height PCI Express uh, cards off of risers. It's dual socket, uh, 2011 three, and then it can take up to whatever that is, like 24 memory slots. Um, yeah, so I've talked to them, if, oh yeah, quad 10 gig LAN. So we will be definitely taking advantage of that bigger 10 gig, sir, uh, 10 gig switch that we got. That's really epic. Um, so this thing is disgusting. Now with that said, there are some issues that I do have to figure out. Unfortunately, the deal ends in like two days. <laughs> so I don't have a lot of time to decide. And because Supermicro's American office is closed for, as far as I can tell, Americans, like if you're American out there, you guys celebrate Thanksgiving for like a week, right? Like is it, as far as I can tell, everyone in America takes an entire week off for 4th of July, Thanksgiving, and Christmas. <laughs> Pretty much, like am I, am I wrong? I, like that's my experience when trying to contact, here's, here's John, what's up? John, am, am I off here? Like a week for 4th of July? No. Oh, come on. No. Like, it's usually an extended weekend in the fall. An extended, extended weekend, weekend, he calls it. But, like, does an extended weekend mean, like, it's not seven days. a day on either side? Okay, not seven days. Okay. How, how, how long? Seven days. What's that? How long do you think? Uh, 4th of if the 4th of July is on a weekend, it might be if like If it's on a three weekend, weekend, three or four day weekend. Three or four day weekend. Deal, but not seven okay, days. but, like, Thanksgiving? Um, when I was in school, they can't hear you, so I have to kind of like yeah, we translate. When I was in school, they did one day on each side. Okay. So, it became like so Thanksgiving would be a five-day five, weekend. Yeah. It'd be like a five-day yeah, weekend. But Christmas, people would that be on three. Three days, take a lot of time off. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, so anyway, getting in touch with anyone down there is kind of an issue right now. Um, but I did get in touch with one of one of my reps, who get this. I was like, okay, 
So what I don't know about this kind of configuration, because obviously you don't run out and buy a raid card. Duh. Um, so you, uh, you know, because my first question when Linus asked or told me he was going to do it, I was like, how do you even plug them all in? Windows storage spaces is a gigantic dog turd. Um, yeah. The last time I used it, though, I haven't tried it on 2016 preview. Um, I mean, okay, so the list kind of kind of goes on here. Like, software RAID in Windows is basically a terrible idea, um, and the performance hasn't been great when I've tooled around with it in the past. So I'm kind of sitting here going like, and, and yes, I'm aware of the issues with RAID cards. To all the people, I haven't looked at Twitch chat, but I'm sure that Twitch chat is full of people talking about how RAID is dead. No, there is still a place for RAID. What RAID is not is foolproof. So yeah. what you want is RAID with some kind of real-time... Uh, real-time uh, failover. So I actually have that. So anyway, so I so I I'm, I call him up and I'm like, so what am I going to run this on? Because I found one post somewhere <laughs> that talked about free NAS and NVMe. Um, so as far as I can tell, most people concerning themselves with a machine like this are not using it for video editing. They're using it as like like a caching server for like very, very high traffic pages or something like that. Like they're looking for massive IOPS. They're probably running some kind of completely custom software solution. Um, they could be running some kind of like, you know, tens and tens of thousands of dollars uh, per piece of software or like, you know, SAN type of system or whatever Not the us. case may be. It would be like, it'd be like a solutions provider working with something like this. Anyway. So I'm just like, okay, so, but I have to decide now if I'm buying the drives. And he's like, um, just go for it. And I'm like, well, well get, can you get in touch with someone who knows what we're supposed to run? He's like, yeah, no, I don't know, but I'm, I'm sure there's something. I'm like, dude, this is like $16,000. He's like, yeah, it'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're not being very reassuring right now. So anyway, I happen to have a handful of 750 series drives and I've been tooling around with just Windows' built-in RAID 5 software. So it said call Wendell. Call Wend I could call it's actually Wendell. actually not a terrible idea. I, I actually... I You'll end up with a Linux solution. No, I meant to message him. Yeah. Um, and then I... No, I, f I remember what happened. That's when I was looking for my phone. Oh. And then when I found my phone, I forgot to message him. Anyway. There you go. So, yeah, I could call Wendell. But the, the problem is that I do already have a solution for our real-time synchronization that is working very, very well. Through Windows. Um, it's, and it is a Windows or I forget what it is, but it's like something else and not Linux. Um, uh, uh, what is it called? Is it called uh, Piercing? Is that what I'm using? Yeah, so I ended up buying Piercing, which is like a really $2,000 piece of software, which is ridiculous. Um, but it were okay, so it runs on uh, Azure, Windows Server, NetApp, and Cloud on Tap. And that's it. And that's it. So it runs on Windows. So uh, what it, but it's, it's, um, it's like amazing. It's bulletproof. It's, this is not a sponsored piece. I paid for it. Although freaking knows. I've gotten my money's worth uh, with tech support because our use case, once again, was very unusual. <laughs> um, and I, I found kind of a weird idiosyncrasy of the software that made it so that if I had an off-site backup that had a much, much slower link, it was basically nerfing my on-site backups and bottlenecking it. Okay. And there was like some tunable that I had to anyway. Nice. Uh, the point is, whenever I make a change to our SSD server, it is replicated within about two seconds to a mechanical server elsewhere. And it also allows me to have a recycle bin for a network storage uh, device that is bulletproof. So if someone deletes something, it moves into a recycled folder on that other machine, even though we don't have to deal with actually having the space taken up by a recycle bin on the actual NAS box. So I'm really, really happy with how that's working and I really just don't want to touch it, so I would like to use Windows. And what that means is even if that software RAID 5 is garbage, what I'll probably do is take the existing Wanix server, and I'll have that as my real-time backup. So I'll be fully solid state on both the A machine and the B and the target machine. 
So that's kind of that's kind of the plan. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Um, I'm sure someone's going to tell me I'm wrong. And hey, with my track record, you might be right. But with four drives running in a RAID 5 over there right now, um, I am able to pull, not in a single, um, not with a single file transfer. Single file transfers, I'm reading at about two gigabytes per second and writing at about one. But with multiple file transfers, I can pull off of it at about two and a half, three gigabytes per second to a RAM disk. And I can write to it at closer to um, one and a half gigabytes per second. So I'm, I'm super thrilled with that. And I'm really, I'm really pleased with, thanks to the IOPS of an NVMe device, or not NM, of NVMe devices, I'm really pleased with the way that it scales with multiple users instead of hitting a brick wall when you hit it with multiple users the way that Mechanical does, and to a much lesser extent, uh, regular solid state, especially off of a RAID card where trim's not working correctly. So um, that's, that's kind of my plan for that. That's going to be pretty nuts. We have no topics today, so I made a topic out of that. Are you going to do a holy shit episode about like just unboxing all the NVMe drives? I, I think it makes a ton of sense. I think uh, once the server and the NVMe drives arrive, that would be... Um, hold on, calculator. This is another thing that's really great about uh, Apple. Watch this. Uh, start menu works? Oh, okay. It actually worked that time. Oh, wow. Brilliant. Uh, well, whatever. Search works. Oh, yeah. Search actually works, which is amazing. Um, Start menu works. Search probably works. Yeah, spotlight I mean, is awesome. The calculator probably works more than 75% of the time. The calculator works in Windows. The calculator's bricked on my work machine and my house. Really? Literally can't open the application. If you do, it'll just load infinitely, and you have to end the task. Oh. <laughs> well, get wrecked, son. Yep. So it would be a 28.8 terabyte NVMe Jeez. NAS box, which would be pretty sick. That's ridiculous. Yeah, I think that I think that justifies a holy shit. But then I would also want to do a video um, benchmarking it and showing it in use. Remember the like really old, like viral nerd video of that dude linking all the SSDs into that machine? He's got like colored hair and they make a weird song out of it and it's like his whole office singing and stuff. No. Isn't it all like Samsung SSDs or something? I have no he, idea. He like copies a CD before he can drop it out of a window. No. You don't remember this? I think it's like 24 SSDs in RAID 0 or something. Let me, like, this used to be, like, just. Why don't I do a rapid fire topic thing. while you go ahead and, uh, and look that up? Yeah. It, it sounds like the hottest Samsung, thing. Samsung, what, what happens when you RAID 24 SSD hard disks? It has 2.3 million views, it was uploaded in 2011. There's Paul, the IT genius, with, like, reddish pinkish hair. Uh, uh, what happened? That's it, yeah. Okay, all right, let's pull this up. Let's pull this up. I'm game. Being marketing people, we thought of some pretty rubbish adverts. Something, something. So he, like, builds the computer. Hacksaws mounting for a Zalman cooler. He's using Skull Trail for some reason. <laughs> and then, yep. Okay. Well, that's. Uh... And then go to the go to like near the end, because they they turn it into like a song and stuff. But you got to get to like. So he's like showing, loading pictures, and then he shows like jumping with all the SSDs and the computer keeps running. This is like very early on SSDs and people don't realize that that doesn't matter at all. Okay. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. This is where they like just have weird music and they just go like, whoa. <laughs> okay. I, <laughs> I loved this video. I somehow missed this little piece of- I uh, watched this video so many times. I showed it to so many people. Man. Apparently 2.3 uh, 2 million of them. Yep. Yep. This was like before anyone I knew had even seen an SSD. Right. And this dude had 24. And I was just like, whoa, it's so fast. So you can you could just remake that video. There you go. I probably won't. 2.3 million you. views. I like the, yeah. 2.3 million views. You won't remake that video. All right, let's get on to the... Uh, in the Paul, the IT ge genius's name. In Paul's name, we remake the... 
You're just not going to let me move on to any real topics. There's no you? real topics. Well, okay. Elon Musk won a contract, which Hell is yeah. fascinating. That's new. That's never happened before. An ocean surveying satellite. Sweet. The cost of launching the probe is valued at $112 million. That is assuming that uh, President-elect Trump doesn't completely cut all the funding for Earth observation. And just for you fact checkers out there, that is more than the cost of uh, 24 NVMe SSDs. Barely. But it is. Um, We've done the math. So, designed to scan the planet's oceans and provide the first ever global survey of Earth's surface water. Satellite something something, SpaceX's Falcon 9 rockets, wow, okay, uh, comes at a higher value than previous launch contracts NASA has awarded to SpaceX. Um, cool. Nice. Uh, well, okay, this one's also from The Verge. Here we go. Samsung is adding new obtrusive ads to your old smart TV. Apparently, they feel they did not make enough money on that TV the first time they sold it to you. So now they need to put some ads on it. So this this was like top of Reddit and all this kind of stuff. And the, the Reddit thread's name was like, right when your return policy ends, they start giving you ads and all this kind of stuff. And uh, they don't seem completely wrong, <laughs> which is pretty brutal. I have zero interest in a smart TV at all. One, I don't watch TV, so slow clap for that one. But then if I was going to watch something like Netflix or whatever, I would do it through a Chromecast because it would be a better and easier experience anyways. You know what? The Netflix app on my smart TV is actually very good. Is it literally easier than like while you're sitting down just saying what you want to watch and then it just happens? Um, it has an air mouse, so that's really nice. Cause like I don't I okay I haven't decided what I'm gonna watch before I sit down. Oh. Like I browse. Oh, I don't. Yeah, and I have like children, so there's like debate. Ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> These things that I don't experience, <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So like. And there's like research to see if it's actually okay to watch, maybe. Um. Yeah. Sometimes, although. I guess you probably already know. I could do that on my phone while we're like looking at things. We also have four, pe five now people sitting down in front of the TV That's at one so time. so many people. So like one of them could be, could be checking Rotten Tomatoes while the other one of them is like, oh, what about this one? Why don't you check this one? Are you gonna have to move? Could be a collaborative, <sighs> maybe. I don't wanna talk about it. Did you guys it. think about that? So, okay, we've thought about it, but we've both come to very different conclusions. So we have both come to the conclusion that we I never thought about this. that we don't have to move. However, we have arrived at that conclusion in two very unique and different ways. <laughs> okay. Would you like to hear my conclusion or yes. Yvonne's conclusion both, first? Both, but yours first. Okay, so my conclusion is that the two kid the two same sex kids can share a room yeah. forever, which will encourage them to move out sooner. Okay, that, that sounds, yeah, okay. Yvonne's theory is that I am not going to have an office upstairs anymore, and I'm not gonna have a server room adjoining said office, and my world's most comfortable gaming setup, which is over on the other side of said office, will no longer be accessible to me because that will be the room that the kids will share, and I will be stuck with one of those bedrooms for me and her to have our computer setups and for me to have all of my server crap. Which clearly is stupid. That is stupid. Also, Windows is force restarting my computer. Right now. While I'm live on a show. There's no delay option. Jeez. Yep. Man, I don't want Windows 10 anymore. Anyways, um, that's, that's, wow. Yep. Are you actually going to lose all your stuff? Another option would be to give up all three of the rooms upstairs and they could all have their own rooms, but... Um, I don't know. I, I guess it depends on how mad the teenage eating, pooping machines um, are and how, how forcefully that, how hopefully they never find this show where I even say I'm considering it because if they ask me, I'm going to be like, nope, these like, two rooms are kid rooms. You divide up the space in them as, as you see fit. But like once they're older, those rooms aren't that big. No, they're not. Like at all. No, they're really not. Our house in general has a storage space 
issue. Yeah. Like in the downstairs, think about it. Yeah, no. There's the it pantry does. off the kitchen in the back room. Which where, is not huge. Which is like not even big enough for yeah. all the food for all the people that need to live in that house, really. Um, part of the problem is that the kitchen layout was redone by the previous owners who were dinks. Um, so, so there's like... Oh, that kitchen layout totally makes sense. There's like a lot of room for wine glasses. And there's like not a lot of room for cooking supplies. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So sense. there's that. So then downstairs, we also have that one tiny hall closet next to the laundry room. And that's it. Yeah. And that has like winter coats and shoes in it. Yeah. And it's already completely full. It has oh, like yeah. the built-in vacuum hose. Like it's full. Upstairs, there's two small closets in the bedrooms. The walk-in closet, again, this was a remodeling choice made by the previous owners. The walk-in closet was torn out to make room for a gigantic bathroom with two sinks. It's a, pretty nice. A two-person standing shower. It's pretty And nice. a really nice bathtub with like tile on all sides and it's like awesome and everything. It's really nice. But it means that you take up a lot of the space in that room with just like wardrobes and, and stuff because there's no I'm closet I'm pretty sure anymore. your bathroom is bigger than one of the kids' rooms will be. Um, so, so anyway, that was it until we put the, uh, the, the ladder up to the attic. Yeah. And then we got a little bit of space up there. Yeah. But other than that, there was nothing. There was nowhere to... There, yeah. Well, and it doesn't help that I turned those two little closets in the office into a server room and world's most comfortable gaming setup. So I have contributed to my own problem here. Yes. This is a thing that I acknowledge. Yeah. Uh, I really don't want to move. But I have actually... And I don't think Yvonne wants to move either. It, it's right? really funny you're bringing this up because I have legitimately looked into what it would cost to jack up the house and put a basement under it. And it is not trivial. No. <laughs> no. Like, it can Those be done. are really expensive. It can be done. But like even aside... That would be sweet though. Even aside from the like deep into six figures that that's going to cost, like it would be an additional mortgage item. It wouldn't be like write a check item. Yeah. Um, in addition to that, when they pick it up and when they put it back structural down... Structural issues. Not so much structural Some. issues. They're pretty good at it. Okay. But all your drywall cracks. Well, but... Okay, I didn't mean like, like it, structural integrity. I meant like yeah, yeah. Structural integrity should be okay. Yeah, but like you basically have to redrywall your entire house, <laughs> and like probably refloor it. Like you, you 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 basically don't do that unless there's like a very compelling reason. But even uh. if we were like okay, let's move to the Philippines for six months, and just tear it down and build something else entirely on the because like by the time you're spending that by the time you're remortgaging and spending that much money uh screw it let's go on holiday for half a year and while they rebuild a new house on the property or something stupid like that i don't even know if we'd be able to do that because that whole area is like a planned neighborhood and there's going to be all those bylaws about what color your house can be and that, what the facing looks like and <laughs> blah 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 I might have to move. I would hate to move. I love where I live. You should have had less kids. Because there's going to be a big conflict there. You know it, too. Or you're going to completely lose... You know lose. this to be true. You do. Or you're going to completely lose your office. And if, and if you completely lose your office, that room will be far cooler than all the other ones. Front-facing window. Two little side rooms that are, like, sick. And a bigger area by itself. So which kid gets that? That's going to create a huge conflict. Firstborn. Birthright. That's pretty much the only way to that's do it. That's still going to create it. Probably, but that's still going to create a I huge mean, that issue. was, honestly, what I'll tell you, though, is in our house growing up, that was how it worked. So my older sister got the first crack at the basement. So, so the way it worked was our basement. So you like, you queue through, essentially? Was amazing, okay? So you went, it was set up as a suite. Um, so, so you went down the stairs and there was like a shared laundry room, yeah. which is like an amazing way for a suite to work, by the way. Um, and then there was a second door, like kind of an airlock style thing. So this laundry room, and then there was another door. That's how I had, that's how most of the places that I've... So that opened up into a really big kind of like living room den area. And then there was a small hallway to a gigantic dining room that had like a, it was, even though it was a basement, the way my parents, they built the house themselves. 
The way they did it was really smart in certain ways. Uh, not in others. Uh, so they actually <laughs> lifted the they lifted the basement up a bit so that it made the house really tall, but there were no building restrictions in the middle of like butt hump nowhere in Maple Ridge anyway, so who was going to care? Um, yeah. But they lifted it up about three feet, three and a half feet above the ground so you could have windows in the basement. Yeah. So in the dining room, in the, in the downstairs kitchen, you actually had like bay windows. It was just like super nice looking out into kind of like the sky backyard area. So then there was a kitchen and then there was a single bedroom with a bathroom. Um, and the idea was kind of you could have like kind of a master bedroom and then you could have like a sleep space outside or, or whatever the case may be. So anyway, she had a shot at that bedroom and the outside den was like a playroom TV watching area. And then you had your own kitchen, fully functional. It always worked. And she took the attic. <laughs> she took the attic. Right, because you had the basement, didn't you? She took the attic. <laughs> so, okay, in her defense, the attic was bigger. Okay. Because it was an entire story of the house. But then again, so was the basement. Yeah. But, and, but like, it slo- the roof sloped. Um, and, but it had, like, pull-down, like, ladder-style stairs to get in and out of it. And, and, like, it's like she wasn't thinking at all. And to get into your bedroom, if you're out late, you had to walk past my parents' bedroom. What an idiot. <laughs> I had my own entrance. Uh. What a tool. <laughs> so anyway, we did it on the birthright system. Okay. So when I moved out, someone else, the next one down was eligible for the for the basement bedroom. Yeah. But um, I, everyone accepted it. So we'll see. We'll see. I especially accepted it. So I was you, thrilled. You don't get an office. <sighs> I don't want to talk about that because, like, everything's too expensive. Or server room. Like, moving, honestly, moving will be too expensive. Where would you put your server? I could put it in the garage, but I'd have to rewire everything. And then, honestly, with Corning's Thunderbolt cables, I could even move all the systems to the garage still. I, I, I have thought about this a fair bit. I could see. I knew you would have thought about it. That's why I'm pushing the topic. So what I was thinking is I would, off of the studs in the garage, to keep them away from the cars, like kind of like tire storage, is I would build you out could make... like a cabinet, like a rack style yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, okay. And I would still rack mount everything. And then if I had it in the garage, the garage actually does stay relatively cool, even yeah. in the summer. Um, because it's not right up against the roof. So, yes, I have given some thought to it, but yes, I will be highly resistant to it anyway. But yeah, moving is basically impossible. That's why I've like casually looked into every every one every like probably 6 months. I go like, what would it take for me to get my own place? And then I'm like, oh yeah. I live in BC. Yep. Okay. Especially the Vancouver part of BC. <laughs> And the yeah. problem is that even if I were to look at a new place, like, so, I, you know what, there's really no point hiding this. It's not like, it's not like no one can look it up. So uh, places in the area that I live go for like a million dollars now. A mere, what was it, six years ago, that number was a little over half of that. <laughs> so, okay, so that's problem number one. So, so if I wanted to upgrade... So, like... Good luck trying to catch up to that. You'd yes. have to save 500-something-ish yeah. grand. And theoretically, I, I sell my place and I, and I make up a lot of that money. But that only buys me a place in the place where I am. So if I'm trying to upgrade to something bigger... Because you want more rooms. Because I want more rooms, then I have to pay proportionally more. Like, it, it, gets, it gets to the point where it's more expensive even to upgrade unless you're willing to remortgage, which, quite frankly, when I'm done being mortgaged, I'm, I'm done. Like, I don't want to be, like, 45 and, like, having a new mortgage. That's, that, I get very, I get very stressed out about debt. Yeah, me too. Um, I, I want it to be done as quickly as possible, and I have no desire to go <sighs> back into debt. Um, especially because I've already had all the stress that I can handle with all the you've, debt that I've had to go into on the business side of things. You've heard some of my stress about debt. Yes. <laughs> so, so basically, right. Okay. So problem number two is that anything with a bigger house is usually newer construction because that's in vogue now. And any newer construction, unless you're doing something custom or you're buying like, like an estate, like something on like an acre or two with gardens and waterfalls and crap. Is... Pretty is on a tiny lot. That too. 
I want for the foreseeable future, my kids or grandkids to have a yard to play in. And that's something that's not in fashion anymore. So if you want a bigger house, you have to have a smaller lot unless you're willing to pay like way more money than makes any sense. So I don't want to move. I don't want to move. I don't want to jack up my house. And do you I don't want to give up my office. Do you want to talk about float plane? Uh, we should probably do our sponsor spots first, though. Funny, funny thing. Uh, we have 6,400 viewers right now, which is about as many, if not more, as when we actually talk about technology. <laughs> yeah. This, this was the, like, Linus is trying to make up for topics, so he's going to talk very quickly and constantly show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really good at it's it. It's worked really well. I'm not complaining. I'm just observing. Well, you know what? No, I mean, it's been a long time since we've done a show like this, where it's just, like, kind of life updates and, but and that is, kind of stuff. This is sort of... The, the show that I sort of pitched the other day. Yeah. The like car talk, the original car talk kind of car idea talk, thing. The car talk show. Yeah. We don't talk about cars, don't worry. It wouldn't be, yeah, no, it wouldn't be nearly no. as bad as that. The, okay, the idea came from, he would drive me home because I couldn't afford transport. Um, you could afford it. It just took a really long time. It okay. usually wasn't running anymore by the time we were finished working. Yeah, I, could, I couldn't afford transport that I could take. Whole other issue. <laughs> um and then we would talk in the like actually really long time that it would take to get me home. <laughs> so that's where the idea came from. <laughs> um, okay, I fix it. Oh, what's this? We have new essential electronics toolkit, which is like a chopped oh. down version and probably a lot cheaper. I'm the assuming. electronics repair starter kit. You know what? Even though this is a sponsor spot, I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna be pretty critical if I don't like this thing. Oh, dang. Because the iFixit ProTech Toolkit is like actually amazing and has saved my butt a lot of times. And I am personally of the mind when it comes to tools that you buy properly once and you take really good care of them and you don't lose them. And that is the way to be about tools and they serve you really well for a long time. That is why this screwdriver has been in my life yeah. for almost 15 years now. This exact screwdriver. That's why I invested in a $100 screwdriver. And that's why I'm not afraid to spend the 60 or $70 or whatever it is for the ProTech toolkit. Um, now, with that said, let's have a look at their value option and see what we think of it here. So it's, it's one thing I like about it already is that the kit is pretty flat, which is a little bit nicer for sliding into a bag. The back of it is totally flat. The front yeah. of it is a little bit of a... I just mean it's thing. thinner. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I so like it has that a magnetic. So I'll take that from you. Um, you can take this. I take that? Yes, because it's... Oh, no, yours is actually fine. Oh, there no, yeah, go. mine, mine's good. Uh, I wish I could kind of show this to you guys. In some, do you want to hold them up while there I go through go. them? Okay. Uh, so you get one of their plastic pry tools. If this was the original ProTech tool kit, not the, the new version, oh yeah, you have them. Uh, so you get one of their little pry tools, then I would actually object pretty strongly to this. Um, but the new ones are a lot more durable and they don't break as yeah. often. They, these guys are pretty smart though. You push here and it pops up. So I, like I think that. it's the bottom for yeah. all of them, which is kind of cool. Um, you get one pair of tweezers and I'll give them credit. This is the only pair that I use. <laughs> The, the angled uh, sharp nose ones. Yeah. And I've used this for everything from grabbing a screw out of somewhere that's hard to reach, like a non-magnetic screw, yeah. to I've actually used it for motherboard socket repair. Oh, wow. It's, yeah, that it's makes fine sense. enough that I was able to get in there. I, I didn't have a needle on me, which is my preferred tool for that. Yeah. And I was able to make do with this. I've had to do it with like a credit card before. <laughs> I've made it work. That's terrible. <laughs> I know. Um, you've got their... Uh, oh, there it goes. They've got their pry tool, the, the little like ni not sharp knifey tool. Uh, I believe these ones are what are actually called spudgers. I can never remember, but anyway, it's got like um, like, a, like a, a prying thing on one side and then it's got a pokey thing on the other end. Uh, use that for everything from, what's it called? Yeah, that is called a spudger. Uh, everything from like pressing reset buttons and routers to pretty much you name it. This is enough stuff outside of a like heat gun to replace the scr uh, screen on a pixel. Um, some guitar picks. Which is pretty solid. Suction cup. The suction cup is actually something I was pretty upset was not included with the original ProTech toolkit. So it's nice to see that. Um, it's enough to work on a phone, not enough to work on like an iMac or something. But That's why I called out the Pixel. All right. 
Now let's look. Let's look at the bits here, because that is that is what I'm pretty worried about. So you've got torques from T4 to TR10, and the R ones are the security torques. That'll cover taking apart SSDs. Um, many many laptops. Um, no triwing. No triwing. I'm pretty disappointed that there's no triwing. Uh, that means you won't be repairing any Nintendo devices, though Nintendo are the main ones that I know of that use triwing. Uh, you've got a P2 and a P5 pentalobe, so that should take care of your Apple needs. Um, you've got a couple slots, three slots, including a very, very, very slim one, a SIM removal. See, I would have rather seen a triwing instead of the SIM removal, but. For some people, I guess that'll be handy. I do like that they have the SIM removal. And five, you use the SIM removal? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I carry like a handful of SIM removal tools in my backpack otherwise, so maybe that's why I don't for care For the last about it. while, I have finally freed myself, thank goodness, but for the last while, I've been using Sony phones. Right. And they don't need them. Okay. All so right, I would never enough. have one on me, and if I did actually happen to need one, I would just go to iPhone. And then you've got five Phillips head all the way from triple zero to two. So if I were to give iFixit some constructive feedback, which I'm sure they're not asking for during a sponsored spot, but if I were to do so, I would drop the size two Phillips and I would drop the SIM removal tool. And I would replace those with a couple tri-wings. But then again, that's probably like the gamer centric yeah. thinking yeah. part of me. And like, not just because I'm a Nintendo fanboy, but they don't break that much. I just put a new optical drive in my Wii. Yeah, you. The only DS I've ever owned had the shoulder buttons die, just like everyone else's they don't, DS they from that generation. They don't break that, that much for normal people. All I played was Mario Kart. We, we, we talked, how long ago did we talk about this? I don't know. You can fix everything, but everything breaks around you. Well, it's not even his fault. He'll just like be near it and it will stop for stop working for literally no apparent reason at all. Like the Wancho computer. Why did it have so many problems? I have literally no idea. I stream like a lot. Like it doesn't I don't have I don't know anyone that has the amount of problems that we've had. I don't know anyone that has like a tenth the amount of problems that we had. And every single time it would just be like, what? the heck is going on and he'd find some like weird way and it would fix it and it would be like oh okay great but but sh we shouldn't have had to do that it, exactly i don't i don't know so the screwdriver is their old style which i definitely don't prefer but is still functional um and a uh, pro tip for those of you who are using it yeah this um, is actually pretty important you want to jam things in the top whenever you need more torque yes that's how you do it because these rubber o-rings slip Yes. So overall, that will save you. At the price, at 20 bucks, not 20 bad. 20 bucks. Not bad. This will cover what casuals will need. Uh, but I personally, and again, like, it is my job to sell this today, but I sort of don't care. I personally would go for the Protect Toolkit anyway. Just yeah. because I think that at that price, it's pretty reasonable, considering that that's kind of, it's like in that, it's in that magic, how much money you would have to spend if you paid someone to repair your stupid thing anyway. Yeah. That being said, if you're shopping for someone, 20 bucks. That's true. Christmas, not okay. a bad drop. Get them started. Not as good as the Protect Toolkit, but it's not supposed to be. Yeah, okay, that's fair. Um, okay, we have another sponsor spot that I promise will be shorter. I'm sorry, that turned into like an unboxing. Are you the, sure? Well, I don't know if it'll be sure. Yeah, you could talk about this thing forever. Literally forever. We so, should okay. get the background first. First he bought one. Yes. Then they didn't deliver it. Forever. <laughs> then Colton was like, hey, who should we work with? And he's like, yeah, I love this thing. It's so amazing. I don't even have it yet, but I'm already in love with it. My pants are so tight right now. Pretty much. Um, so they reached out and they sent us one. Before Luke ever even got one. By a lot, again. <laughs> um, so and anyway. I had to bring it back to work. Oh, that was so heartbreaking. Anyways, when you're cooking uh, meat, which isn't at all the only thing that you can cook in with this thing. Uh, but you when haven't even said what it is. It's, it's, so it is a sous vide cooker, but like an immersion cooker, but like almost no one knows what that actually means unless they already have one. Um, when, you're, when you're cooking meats, you, what you're, the goal is to make the, the 
the whole thing get to a minimum temperature, including the very middle, which is rather difficult to do. And you're using heat that is much higher than what you're actually trying to get to. I'm just mouthing sous vide because <laughs> it's fun. Um, so you usually will overheat the outside just to get to the temperature that you're trying to get to in the middle. Um, what a sous vide allows you to do is you, you vacuum seal or evacuate the air out of a Ziploc bag so that the Ziploc bag is touching right next to um, the meat. And then you dip it into water. The sous vide cooker is extremely precise and will keep the water at an extremely Hold precise Hold on, actually, this is really important. We interrupt this program to bring you this question from RT Chaser 07. Can you cook Hot Pockets in it? Uh, I think you could. I think you could. You can't cook a turkey unless you cut it first and then you can cook it. Okay, sorry, carry on. Yeah, yeah. You can't cook a turkey because there would be like pockets in there because mm -hmm. of where like this, the organs are. Or would have been. Or would have yeah. been. So like that wouldn't really work because okay. the heat wouldn't be able to go all the way through. Okay, Anyways, carry on, carry on. It makes it essentially, so all that you have to do is put like your meat and some herbs and spices in a little bag with some olive oil. I always put my meat in a bag with olive oil. Put that in a pot, put this thing in it, and in the app, which is amazing, go like, I want it to look like that. It has a visual doneness thing, and then it just does it for you. You sear it for like 20 seconds, serve, and it will probably be one of the best cooks of that meat that you've had. Yeah, it is actually really good. And it's available now for holiday gifting. Check it out at chefsteps.com slash jewel. Which is probably good because I ordered mine a long time ago and I finally got it. All right, which <sighs> brings us finally to Cooler Master. Check yeah. out the Cooler Master store for all your Cooler Master case, cooler, power supply, and peripheral needs. It features exclusives like the Master Keys Pro L RGB Crystal Edition, which I'm going to have to Google because I actually don't know what that is. Master Keys? Master Keys Pro L RGB Crystal Edition. What I'm assuming the crap does that it's even... a keyboard. Oh, with... that actually yeah. looks pretty cool. Yeah. Well, nice. Oh, way to go, Sick. Cooler Master. I That's the best. I love, love how it's not in English, so even much. though you're on the dot .com site. Let's try again. Nice. Wow. Best 404 page I've ever seen. Wow, so much wow. Okay, this one works. Look at that. It's actually kind of beautiful. Um, all right. Blue, brown, or red switches. Okay, all right. That's that's pretty hip. On the fly macro and profile support. Individual lighting. That's pretty cool. Okay, all right. Okay, all right. And okay, they're so Cooler clear Master. that you can see the color of the switch. That's actually pretty sweet. Okay, Cooler Master, you got our attention now. What else you got? They're okay. highlighting some Black Friday weekend deals, including 25% off keyboards, cases, and more with coupon code BF2016. Best friend 2016. Oh, no, it's probably Black Friday, isn't it? Yes. Okay, that makes sense. Visit cmstore-usa.com to learn more about Cooler Master's wide range of products and maybe pick up something for yourself this holiday season. What a greedy ad notes, Colton. Some people, for some people, the holiday season is about buying for others. Yeah. Colton. Not for Colton. Yeah, I wouldn't buy for Colton. Sorry, Colton's wife. What a jerk. I don't know if I can say her name. I hate that guy. Um, all right. So another funny story. No, we have more. We have more viewers now than we did before <laughs> we started doing ad spots. I'm convinced that the, the more show? that the more fun we have, just like having fun of like. Okay, I was actually ready to make fun of that keyboard. Like, I was super ready for that. But it was sweet. But it was actually pretty good. Anyway, yeah. I'm convinced that, that the more it's fun sweet we if have that's with what the you're ads, going for. the closer it is to being just as off topic as the entire rest of the show. <laughs> you can't tell the difference. Because you're like, wow, they're pretty informal about these ads. <laughs> they're literally, like, attacking the companies <laughs> that are giving them ads. <laughs> Look, I and if, if they wanted a professional <laughs> ad read, they know where to go for that. And if they, and if they want this approach, <laughs> then by all means, give us money. Yeah, why not? There you go. Um, okay, let's uh, talk about the Float, the plane, float plane Club. Now that, so you now finally that, get a topic today. Yeah, yeah. I'm going Linus's screen. I'm putting <sighs> us in the background. 
This is all about, I'm just gonna illustrate whatever it is you're talking about here. Okay, so under the forums section, you'll see the hub. And the hub is where, like, we expect most people on the site to go because, Holy you know, crap, go away. Off Topic is there. And there's almost 1.2 million posts because it's off topic. And there's, like, the memes thread and the cars thread and the holy crap, that's a big thread. I mean, anime graphics thread. cards is still pretty good. It is. Yeah. It is. But Off Topic. Is off Topic is ginormous. Yep. But there's also the Float Plane Club, Rip Vessel. Whoa, what? what is that? What? Oh, oh, that is so, like, savage, man. Rip Vessel. Rip Vessel. Savage. <laughs> Anyways, so you can go in there. Well, I'm working on it, okay? I'm okay. trying to make your terrible site look good. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, I, I know, okay. no, the output is 1080p, but I'm high DPI, so, like, it was it was a little small for them to see. Okay, just, okay. I'm just bugging you. Oh. <laughs> I'm just bugging you. It's okay, we're still friends. <laughs> Hello, darkness, my old friend. Um, anyways, this is the Float Plane Club, and we have an interesting announcement for you guys. Yes, I wonder if Eric do. and Catboiler are just screaming right now because they're like, the, everything's going to break. Uh, Eric, the tech guru, and Catboiler, the uh, amazing like dude, name. but should probably get a different name. Yeah, I mean, it's against our, ter it's against our forum, like... Uh, terms to change your username, but Cat Boiler, you have my personal permission. Yeah, I'll change it for you. To, you uh, think so. to apparently, it came name. out of a name generator, and also like wow. a cat almost like killed him when he was younger. A cat almost it, like, killed him. Cut his artery or something. Okay. It was like actually a big deal. I don't. Sorry if I screwed up the story. Okay. Anyways, they have been absolutely great. Uh, cat Boiler came in and was like, "Hey, so." I have an idea for how you should do everything, and I read it. And I you was like, explained what this holy is at all crap, yet. it's a lot better than ours. So, Rip Vessel, we tried to make our own. So, I guess that's actually like. Right now, it's a sub yeah. forum yeah. on the Linus Tech Tips forum. It won't always be that. It will not always be that. Because that sucks. Yeah, that's, um, we, we are aware that this is not the ideal solution. Like, there aren't, there's oh, not a graceful oh. way to. Give people notifications. Are we going to show them like an early video? They're, they're able to see all the videos here, for one. So they know what videos are coming up. Yeah. I don't yeah. know if we thought That's about fine. that. That's fine. One of my favorite ones to show off is Brandon's, because whenever he films anything, it yeah. looks better than all the other videos, because he's filming and he cares his more own about video. his own stuff. Yeah. Basically. Yep. So check this out. Notice how it's orange? The color's a little off. We're going to fix that. Yeah, I did not notice it was orange. I thought it was just like a broken YouTube <laughs> clone. We'll figure it out. Okay. Okay. So right now, what we are about to witness is a video running off of... Can, how much detail can you give them about this like solution you guys clutched together in uh, like three weeks? Cat Boiler. Back end is, is Cat Boiler. Yeah. 100%. So it's we have edge servers yep. that are like distributing things. Yeah. So... I'm going to be light about the details for now, yeah. just because... Can they expect a video about how it works at some point? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, but give us some give us some idea how so you guys built like, a video delivery. So we have a little delivery. bit of load balancing going on. We have, yeah. we have the edge servers that don't really use their CPUs very much. Are uh, they all on the same continent? They all are currently in the same continent. They will not always be, but we haven't figured out geo-targeting yet. Mm -hmm. So once that gets figured out, then we'll spawn some in other areas, but they're all North America right now. That being said, I do know outside of North America people that have watched full bitrate 1080p streams and had no problem at all. So I'm pretty sure it's fine, um, but we will make it better for people. We're gonna make it great on. again. We're gonna make uh, early access, private, high bitrate video streams great again. Um, yeah, should, so should I, should I just, play. should I just, uh, watch it, watch it totally break. Uh, oh no. Oh God. Oh, it's horrible. <laughs> oh, of course. Do you think one of them was literally breaking it in the background so that we would have to go through this? Maybe. I'm on edge. Is that a problem? Oh God, that might be a problem. Who goes on edge? Oh, right. We had to do that. That makes sense. Uh... <laughs> Anyways, the other part of the story is that it's still very much in development. It's alpha. Yeah. It's alpha right now. Okay. Can you can you do the thing? Can I? Do you know, uh, do you know the thing? Uh, no, I don't have your sharing working right now. Anyway, so uh, bear with me. I'm Not going sharing. to I'm going to do this thing. I don't have your screen sharing working right now. No, I just want to see if it works over here. Uh, no, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. We got this. We got okay. this. Okay. You okay. buy time. Buy time. Anyways, so we've been developing this thing. How it started. 
uh, was that people that were on Vessel were served a video right before Vessel went down saying that they could sign up for a newsletter. And we sent an email to those people saying like, hey, we're trying to do this well, we thing. We tried to send an email to we, those people. We tried. It only worked for some of them uh, because we got super flagged pretty quick. Um, but we're trying to do this thing. It's in early production right now. But what you're going to be able to do is download the videos um, at probably lower resolution, but much, much higher bit rate. Like our 720p looked better than YouTube's 1080p right away. And that still works, even if this continues to not work, um, which would be, you know, pretty good. Uh, oh! Oh, oh, there we go! Oh! Hey! There we go! Okay. So that's 360p. Which, I mean, so they're we, watching on Twitch. We anyway. can chance it again and. See, there you go. Oh, look at that. Look at that black bar Brandon magic. Yeah. Okay. So like it, Okay, here we go. Hold on, hold on. Oh dang. Oh, we're oh, we're stepping it up to 480p. So this it does that weird thing, so we're going to maybe try to figure that out at some point. Uh, yes, yes. Step okay. it up again. Step it up. 720p. Step it, step it, step it. Oh step, step it. man. Oh, is There's that 720p, 720p streaming? 720p stream. Oh damn. What then else do, we got? do 1080. Do the we, last. We, do the we, last step. Hold on. Should we? Should we show off the? Uh, Risk it. The thumbnail. Thumbnail yeah. preview. Oh, oh, yeah. thumbnail scrubbing. Thumbnail yeah. scrubbing. Hold on. The whole oh, way. I want to see Brandon touch that camera. So let's skip to that part. Oh, look at that buffer speed. Oh, beautiful. Oh, look at it. Look at it buffered. It's playing. Look at that. Oh, oh wow. yes. This isn't even 1080p either. Hold on. It takes a sec. Give it a sec. Give it a Give sec. Give it a second. Hold on. Wait. There you go. Oh, oh. Oh. Oh, we are live. We are live at 1080p. Look at Brandon touching that camera. Look at him. Oh, he's like massaging. I could watch Brandon touch cameras buttons all day. And it's touch screen. Wow. Brandon could touch my touch screen any day. Look, it's a 50D versus a. Wait. Look, it's a 60D versus a 5D. Anyways, so Eric has done a ton of work on like the CMS so that like Nick and other people at the office can naturally upload videos to this thing. Um, and he's done work in other spaces as well, like getting the transcoding stuff to work. Catboiler has been all over the place in terms of how everything works. He's yep. boiling cats over here, oh. boiling cats over there. He, he like king cats that he, are already boiled over there. He theorized and actually did the whole like actual infrastructure, which makes this work at all, which is great. Um, Mortis has been really helpful guiding over the whole time. He's like in school and stuff right now, but yep. in, in his the very limited spare time, he's actually done a lot in trying to like help guide how it's going to integrate with the forum and all this kind of stuff. And then he's going to be a much bigger part of it uh, over the next little while once his school is in kind of a break and. So people have been really busting their butts getting this working so and it's working. Tech side of things, these guys have been unbelievable. Yeah. Um, but what we actually still haven't quite figured out <laughs> is the business side of things. Oh yeah. Uh, what we're actually going to do with the technology. I haven't um, been worried about that part at all. So what, <laughs> so what we what we want, because um, Floatplane Club is three bucks a month right now, and it's only but it's only for Linus Media Group stuff. We have no way of having other content creators on the platform. Like it's just through the forum. Everything's. Hold, hold. Someone just asked if Cat Boiler uses a sous vide cooker. Sous vide cookers don't boil. I just needed to. I just needed to. You had to say that. that. I just had to. Okay. Well, I'm glad you yeah. clarified that. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. And I don't think they have a setting for whole cat anyway. No. Um, okay. So we we still don't know exactly what we're gonna do with it. But the objectives are pretty clear. We want members of the float plane club, which will likely serve the same kind of purpose, at least for now, for Linus Media Group, as something like Patreon and Vessel kind of rolled into one. Um, and we're going to be combining it with the existing contributor badge system that we had on the Linus Tech Tips forum so that you can start to, um, so, so for example, bronze, silver, and gold contributors already get float plane club access, Yeah. but bronze contributors who are paying $5 a month also get no banner ads on the forum. So we're gonna try and figure out how to turn float plane club and forum contributors into some kind of a larger sort of system that would take the place of what something like yeah. a Patreon and something like a vessel would have in the past for us. Um, so we're trying to think of like other ways to give benefits to yeah. other people on the platform. So and that, 
Should we talk about some of those ideas? Yeah, so some of the benefits, I'm just gonna stick to uh, Float Plane Club benefits okay. for now. Yeah. So some of those benefits include early access, although what's kind of cool and also makes it not as compelling about this is that we are way dialing back the way that we're handling early access. So if we think something's time sensitive, it's going simultaneous release yeah. because there's no contractual obligation anymore for us to release um, things one week early on on this platform. So that's that has been frustrating for both sides of the equation. Yeah. Um, sometimes there would be something that like we really thought should have been pretty timely, but we had done too many simultaneous releases in a short window, so yeah. we like couldn't release it simultaneous, and it was like okay, that's pretty rough. People really need to see this on YouTube because it's like an embargo product yeah. that just came out. So benefit number one is we want to manage the, our releases better. Benefit number, and that, that's for everyone. Yeah. Uh, benefit number two is we want to provide a higher quality stream than yep. what you can get on YouTube for free. Um, and I mean that in the sense that it won't have any baked in ads anymore. So our pre-roll and our integration ads at the end, those will be gone. And we want the quality to look better. Benefit number three is for the foreseeable future, we want to continue to offer downloads DRM free to Float Plane Club members. So, and what I would love to figure out, and it, it's not complicated, it's just a matter of Workflow. getting it together, um, is how to make it so people could just subscribe to an RSS feed, download the video, and drop it into Plex with all the metadata populated so they could watch it off their Plex server. Yeah. For Float Plane Club members, we would consider for personal use that to be within the license that they have for the content. For personal use, but yeah. That they're subscribed to for personal use. Um, so DRM free is another one of the benefits that we want to have for this whole concept. And then uh, there was another one that I was thinking, right. And then finally, um, at some point in the future, we would like to find a way to make it ad supported. And I, this is getting way ahead of ourselves, I know. We would like to find some way to make it ad supported so that the benefit could be for us that we are able to pull people off platform. Ad supported for people who aren't yes. float plane members. Yes. Just to make that. Optionally ad supported. Yeah. So if you, um, like a free tier a free that is ad-supported. Yeah. Um, so the benefit for us would be that we actually engage directly with our viewers, and the benefit for viewers would be no more YouTube subscription box nonsense. Um, so that is that is where we are kind of And that's a big heading. maybe. That's a huge maybe because it depends. We would probably have to double or triple our sales team. We would have to get other creators on board. Um, there would be a lot of things we would have to do, but we have we have some interesting tech. We just need to figure out how to do with it, what to how to do with it, how to English it at all. Um, and that's where uh, that's kind of that's kind of where we're at on it. I haven't actually been paying close attention to what Twitch chat has had to say about it, but. Basically, um, yeah, I mean, what, what else is there to say? I mean, there's a lot of stuff still to be worked on. Like one yeah. thing is if, if, you're, if you load the thread and you look at the video and stuff, it all works. And then if you go to like the last page of the thread and then back to the first page of the thread, it won't work anymore. You have to refresh. Yeah, and like we know why and we'll figure it out. Um, the downloads thing is a little janky right now, but that is actually very close to being finished. Cat Bowler has been figuring that out, um, just like everything else. Um, so, like, there's there's still a bunch of work to be done, but it's it's coming along incredibly fast, and it's already, to be completely honest, a pretty good experience. Um, there are some problems, like I know Jake was using an iPhone 6s with Chrome installed and it didn't seem to work for him. So there's like some use cases that don't work super awesome. Oh. I wonder um, if they have changed some stuff. What do you mean? Because uh, this isn't playing on Safari right now either, and I played one yesterday. One thing that we need to do is get a dev server um, <laughs> because we're doing live changes on everything. So when things break, it's just like, oh, crap. Uh, everyone has that version right now. Uh, so we'll be getting a dev server soon. It's still all very early on. We're what, like three weeks in? Well, it, did it work? Yeah, three, no, that was a different thing. Sorry, I was looking at something else. Yeah. Okay, that was a YouTube video. Because I definitely showed this to my dad like the other day. Yeah, so I don't know. Still figuring it out, yep. but it's coming along incredibly fast. Um, 
And on a desktop, at least, it seems to work fairly well. If you do have a problem, refresh the page. If that doesn't fix it, uh, let us know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Pretty it much. definitely works on Android. So if you're, like, like Chrome on Android or Chrome on Windows, then you're good. Yeah. <laughs> Those ones are the main tested things, which is probably the most of our views. So yeah. I just I wanted to demo it working on mobile. I was trying to do that and it didn't fly. Here we go. Woo! Look at it go. 1080p mobile. Yay. Yeah. So it's working on Android. Yeah. Which is why I always carry an iPhone and an Android phone. So I think everyone should do that. For, that, for for flow play. That way, I can have better and a better Instagram experience on my iPhone. There you go. And I can watch flow plane videos on my uh, on my Android phone. <laughs> we'll figure that out at some point. Um, but, okay. Yeah. So, do we have any like actual topics for this week? Uh, blah, no. Blah 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 blah. Xbox One streaming comes to the Oculus Rift on December twelfth. Um, does anyone care? I mean. I don't know. Free update. Well, it better be free. I don't think anyone's going to pay hate, for it. I really, really hate this like kind of description of virtual reality. The uh, free update will allow users to play Xbox One games in front of a huge virtual display. Have you ever had that feeling in VR? And you're like, wow, this is a big screen. Like, have you ever felt that? Yeah. Actually, really? Yeah, yeah, I'll buy that. It I've had the experience that, that this is a huge, uh, relatively low definition virtual display, we, like yeah. in like in a like a theater mode. I just, hate theater mode. Yeah, no, I don't. I didn't say I like it. I just said I, I just, felt like it was a really big virtual display. I didn't yeah. think it was a great experience. Yeah. So, like, is that the view? Because that's rough. Yeah, I think it's supposed to be like. Um, I think it's you're supposed to be like sitting in like a cool like harbor or something and then you play a game on like it does it, it, it yeah I, I don't think it's a very i don't think a lot of people are going to do that it's like yes i want something on my face so i can play xbox games and like you own a rift meaning and that was forza so yeah. you own a rift and a pc and a game that works on pc but you're going to run it on your xbox and use your rift on your xbox and play it in that house thing what? <laughs> like, I don't know. Ugh. Um, wow. Okay. Uh, this, the original article here is from the nextweb.com. Apparently, you can delete yourself from the internet by pressing this button. Instantly get a list of your accounts matched with direct links to delete them. Sign in with Google. Um, hey, another Linus. Nice, there you go. I think it's Linus in Sweden. So, yeah, he's Swedish, just like all the other Linus. That would be kind of cool, actually, because you could get the links for, like, everything and not necessarily click all of them. <laughs> yeah, so you log in with your Google account. It scans for apps and services you've created an account for. Every account it finds gets paired with an easy-delete link pointing to the unsubscribe page for that service. Within a few clicks, you can be freed from it. Sounds great in theory, but I haven't actually tried it, so there you go. Speaking of things that sound great in theory, Valve introducing the Steam Awards. Uh, this was originally posted by Arcane Kitten on the forum. Oop. There we go. Okay. Coming this December, nominated in the following categories. The Test of Time Award, which presumably will be won by Civilization II. The I'm Not Crying, There's Something in My Eye Award. The Just Five More Minutes Award. The Whoa Dude Award. Okay. The Villain Most in Need of a Hug Award. The Game Within... These are really try-hard awards. Wow. Yeah. The Best Use of a Farm Animal Award. Can Goat Simulator win? I guess. I mean, is that just supposed to be the Goat Simulator? The We Didn't Think of Everything Award. Um, it's kind of cringe, actually. Okay. Well, I'm sure someone's having fun with it. Um, All right. <laughs> thanks for watching The WAN Show. I'm sure someone had yeah. fun with that, too. We will see you again <laughs> next week. Next same bat time, same bat channel. Bye. B -b 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 Bye. Oh, whoops. Oh, the We Didn't Think of Everything Award is apparently No Man's Sky. But I still think that's inaccurate, because that would be more We Didn't Think of Anything. Yeah. And we didn't do it either. Yeah. Okay. 
So now we're all or on I the guess same page. We thought about a lot of stuff. Yeah. And then stopped there. <laughs> oh, Lord. We had a bunch of ideas that a bunch of people told us were really good. And we were like, you know what? Those are good ideas. We contemplated that. And then we sold them the idea. Why is my life hard? Why does nothing work? Why? 